Welcome to the channel everybody. For anybody new, I am Matt Luna. And today we're talking about chatterbaits. Everything you need to know about a chatterbait. We're talking about how to fish it, where to fish it, colors to choose, retrieves, chatterbait trailers, all kinds of different stuff in today's video. The chatterbait constantly comes up as a top bait for tournaments all over the country. So be sure to check out the video description. There's gonna be all kinds of links and discount codes down there for you guys to take advantage of. Those links and discount codes also go to support the channel. And this video is brought to you guys by Waterland Fishing Optics. Waterland Fishing Optics makes awesome sunglasses. We're gonna be talking about grass and grass lines and grass flats here in a second with the chatterbait. And in those scenarios, you're gonna want a quality pair of polarized sunglasses like a pair of Waterland sunglasses. I've been wearing them for years now, guys. These are the sunglasses that I use. This frame right here is the Hybro frame, and these are what I wear off the water. Um, if you could only go with one lens, I would definitely recommend the green lens, but if you know of a color that you already prefer, go ahead and check that out. So head over to waterlingcode.com, use my discount code LUNA15, it's gonna save you 15% off. Again, that website is waterlingco.com, use my discount code LUNA15. The first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to fishing the chatterbait is where to fish it. My first recommendation is gonna be around grass, then it's gonna be around rocks, and I'm gonna steer you guys away from fishing it around wood. The reason the chatterbait's best around grass is because it comes through that grass without hanging up the best. You can get stuck in that grass and rip it out. You can also fish it around rocks. I've had success doing that, kind of ticking those rocks, but the place I'd stay away from is wood cover. Wood cover is not the best for the chatterbait. That chatterbait blade has a tendency to kind of hit that wood, kind of roll over, and then your hook ends up going into that piece of wood and you might be losing that bait. And if you know anything about chatterbaits, not all of them are cheap, so that's not something that you're gonna wanna be doing. So now we know where to fish the chatterbait. Now we need to talk about when to fish the chatterbait. My primary times that I'm gonna be using a chatterbait is when it's windy, when it's low light, and when there's stained water. My first preference is early morning, low light conditions, a chatterbait's gonna shine. You got grass, low light, grass and wind, grass and stained water, or just stained water in general, that's where a chatterbait is gonna excel. The reason why the wind is helpful for a chatterbait is because it breaks up that light penetration. It doesn't give the fish as good of an ability to see that bait. If you're around clear water and it's slack clom, chatterbait's probably not gonna be your best bait to go to. If you have stained water and it's pretty calm, dirty water and it's pretty calm, you might be able to get away with that chatterbait. But if it's clear water, which is what I fish a lot of, you're gonna need that wind or you're gonna need that low light to really have the chatterbait excel. If you have that grass, like I was talking about a second ago, and you have low light or you have wind, you're gonna be able to fish that chatterbait around that grass, rip it through the grass if it gets snagged in there, and you have a prime conditions for that chatterbait. So we know where to fish a chatterbait and we know when to fish a chatterbait. But how do we know which color to choose? Now I'm gonna break it down for you pretty simple. You need about three or four different chatterbait colors. You need a bluegill color, you need a shad color, you need a red color, and you need a dirty water color. For a shad color, white or white and chartreuse. For a bluegill color, you pretty much just need to go with green pumpkin. For a red color, pretty much need to go with firecraw. And for a dirty water color, you basically just need a black and blue chatterbait. So one of my favorite all time colors is this one. This one is green pumpkin, has a little bit of that shad in there, and then it has the chartreuse on the bottom. I like this for a bluegill imitation, but a lot of times I'm putting this down and going to straight green pumpkin because it's a little bit less subtle. Now when it comes to picking the specific color for your lake, it all comes down to whatever forage you're trying to imitate. That green pumpkin's gonna imitate a bluegill or a perch. That white's gonna imitate a shad. The red is gonna imitate a crawdad, and so can that green pumpkin, and then that black Black and blue is just there for that dirty water. For whatever reason, black and blue seems to work really well in dirty water. So we know where to fish, when to fish, and what color chatterbait we need to have. But now we need to know how to fish it. We need to know what kind of a retrieve for the chatterbait. Now typically, I'm not burning a chatterbait because the chatterbait has a tendency to blow out. So basically, if it's going through the water column and you're reeling it too fast, it has a tendency to kind of just spin out one direction or another. Now, sometimes that can be good, but rarely do you want your whole retrieve to have that kind of crazy erratic motion. Most of the time, you're gonna wanna slow wind it, ticking the top of that grass, maybe getting it stuck and popping that thing loose, ripping it out of that grass, and then occasionally 
in between that slow, steady retrieve, you're gonna give a couple real quick cranks, a rod twitch or something like that to give it that extra action. But most of the time, you're gonna be slow reeling that thing, giving it a crank or two real fast to kind of get that erratic action, but you don't wanna burn it to where that thing's dancing all over the place like crazy. That's just not real realistic. But if that fish, you gotta imagine, if that fish is coming up behind that, that bluegill or whatever, and it gets close to it, it's probably gonna scurry away, and then that fish is gonna grab it because it doesn't wanna to have to be chasing it down like crazy. So that's a natural thing for a fish to do, or a bait fish to do, is if it's going through that water column that bass is right behind it and you give it that twitch and that jerk that's gonna be a natural reaction of a bait fish so then that bass is gonna go over there and eat it a second ago I mentioned having that chatterbait get stuck in the grass and ripping it out a lot of times that's where your bites are gonna come you're gonna be ticking that grass with the chatterbait you're gonna feel it kind of come through there and all of a sudden it's just gonna kind of load up and then you're gonna pop it loose with that rod and having the right rod which we are gonna get into is key to getting that thing out of the grass clean but that's a lot of time, right when you get that bait out of that grass and you're starting to reel it again, that's when you start getting that reaction strike out of that fish. It's probably sitting in that grass, that thing rips out of there, they think it's a bluegill, they think it's a shad, they think it's a crawdad, whatever they think it is, they go over there and they devour it and then boom, you got a fish on. Now earlier I mentioned fishing the chatterbait around rocks. Now my primary target with the chatterbait is gonna be that grass, but there has been times where I've fished it around rock and caught quality fish, and I slow reeled it over those rocks. I didn't drag it like you drag a jig. You throw that thing out there, you're gonna let it go all the way to the bottom, and you're just gonna slow reel it so you can feel that blade doing its job down there, and you're just feeling it go right over the top of those rocks, and then eventually you're just gonna feel that thing load up, you're gonna feel that fish take that bait, but you wanna be ticking something. You always wanna be coming in contact with something with the chatterbait. If you're fishing in an open water without the grass or without the rock, it's not the best scenario for the chatterbait, but if you are, that's where those erratic winds of the reel are gonna come into play to give it that erratic action since it's not coming into contact with anything. You don't need to overdo it, but you know, reel it slow for a little while and then give it a couple, reel it slow for a while, give it a couple, something like that, or reel it slow for a while, rod twitch, something to give it a little bit of action to kind of entice that fish to bite. Cause if it's just slow reeling, that fish is probably gonna follow and you need to give it some kind of an erratic motion to get that fish to react and commit to it. So something very important when it comes to chatterbait fishing is the trailer. You're not gonna fish a chatterbait without a soft plastic trailer coming off the back of this chatterbait head. Now there's three different styles that I use on my chatterbaits. I'll use a swimbait style, a cross style, or a Zocco style. For that swimbait style, I'm gonna be going with the Six Sense Divine Swimbait in the 3.8 size. For the cross style trailers, I'm gonna be going with the Six Sense Prawn or the Six Sense Stroker Craw. The, the prawn's a beaver style, and then the stroker craw is gonna have that double tail grub style look to it. Now you can also rig that beaver style bait vertically and it's gonna have a different look to the back of it. It might go down a little bit deeper in that water column because it's not gonna be laying flat. It's gonna be laying perpendicular like this horizontally, so it's gonna sink a little bit easier. It's not gonna have the resistance that it would if it was flat. And then also a Zocco style trailer that was designed for the chatterbait. I pour those myself, I bought a mold and I started pouring them myself, but a Zocco is a very common trailer with the chatterbait as well. Now I'm gonna link some stuff down in the description so you guys can see for yourself exactly what I'm talking about bait-wise, trailer-wise, stuff like that in today's video. So make sure to check that out. Those links are affiliate links, so it will help me out on the channel, and there's gonna be some discount codes that I want you guys to be able to take advantage of as well. So far we've covered pretty much everything when it comes to the chatterbait, except the rod and the line. Right now we're talking about the rod. Having the right rod is important with the chatterbait. You don't want one that's too heavy, and you don't want one that's too soft. I use the seven foot three medium heavy six cents divine rod for my chatterbait fishing. It's been great for the chatterbait. It has a soft enough tip that when that thing's going through the water and you get the bite, it allows that fish to really get in there and get that hook, but it's got the backbone that when you set the hook, you get good hook sets. It's soft enough that when you're fighting it, it's not ripping that hook out of that fish's mouth, but because for some reason, if you're using the wrong rod with the chatterbait, you tend to lose some of those fish on the fight back to the boat. Sometimes if it's too soft of a rod, you're just not getting good hook penetration. And if it's too heavy, of a rod, I believe you're pulling that hook out of that fish's mouth. Another drawback to having a rod that's too soft is if you're fishing around grass and you get this chatterbait stuck in that grass, you're not gonna be able to rip it out of there and have it come back clean. You're kind of dragging it through the grass rather than ripping it out. Because when you rip that thing out of that grass, it kind of makes that grass kind of like explode out a little bit. And then this thing comes through that grass and ends up being clean on the other side and it's continuing to run right. If it's not a stiff enough rod, it's just gonna kind of drag it through there. Probably gonna get some grass hung on that hook or up here in the blade. 
but if you have the right rod, you're gonna be able to rip that thing out of that grass. It's gonna come back clean. And you're gonna be able to get those reaction bites that we already talked about. So the next piece in this chatterbait puzzle is talking about line. I use 15 pound Sunline or Seaguar. I use Sunline FC Sniper or Seaguar Invisex. I use them pretty interchangeably. I'm gonna link that stuff down in the description of today's video as well, so check that out. But the line is pretty important. I don't think you need to go much heavier than that 15. Now, if you're around giants, thick grass, heavy cover, stuff like that, then maybe you can go up, but then you're gonna start impacting vibration. You're gonna also impact the depth that you get. Now, I would try to steer you away from going down to 12 pound test or even lighter than that, because ha I have some horror stories from losing fish from using too light a line with the chatterbait. Usually you're around that grass, you're around some type of cover, and you're gonna wanna be able to get those fish out of that cover and 15 pound test is usually good enough to do the job. It's also stiff enough that when you go to rip that thing out of the grass, you don't have too much stress because of that, or stretch because of that fluorocarbon and you're able to get that bait back cleanly like we discussed in the rod portion of this video. Now, if you're around smaller fish, like if I'm fishing Lake Mead, super clear water, smaller than average fish, I might go down to that 12 pound test in order to get the bait down a little bit deeper and to try to get a few more bites, maybe get a little bit extra action out of there, a little bit more depth because of that clear water. So that is an option, but normally I'm gonna go with that 15 pound test and then kind of feel it out from there. Now when it comes to reels to use for a chatterbait, I'm going with a six three to one gear ratio or something in that ballpark. I don't like faster gear ratios than that because I wanna be able to slow that thing down and still feel that vibration. Sometimes if I go up to a seven to one or something higher than that, I end up fishing this thing too fast and then I gotta really remind myself to slow it down. I'll go with that six three to one gear ratio because I feel like it's the perfect blend of both. I can slow it down, but I can also speed it up when I need to. I like to go with the Daiwa Tatula SV, the Daiwa Tatula CT, Whatever reel you're gonna get, just make sure it's a quality reel. You want something with good casting ability, you want something with good drag because the chatterbait can catch some big fish, but you want something that has decent depth in the spool because you can make long casts with the chatterbait, especially if you go heavier than some of these half ounce. But basically sticking with a quality reel in that six, three to one ballpark for the gear ratio, you're gonna be set. Guys, make sure to check the description for the links and the discount codes and make sure to use those links and discount codes because it goes back to the channel. And if you guys wanna see me in a tournament situation, fishing a chatterbait and catching fish on a chatterbait, make sure to click the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.